maybe we'll go. All right, so I want to start the uh, next assignment just so if you're ready for it, you can start working on it. Um, our next assignment is going to be a drone. So what this um, entails is we're creating basically like a flying device. Um, it's going to have specific parts, and it's um, going to be a little bit more, a um, little bit more time intensive. Yes, because we're going to be focusing on basically one object uh, for our scene. Oops. Uh, yeah, I like this one. Um, also, it's going to be a little bit more specific. So, like our previous ones, you know, if you got a bowl that was kind of like clumpy or something, you're not really going to notice it too much. Or if the handle had a, a bump in it, it could just be part of the design. Where something like this, we need to have smooth surfaces and we need to make it look like an actual product. So in this case, we're actually trying to build this so it looks and feels like an actual object, okay? And that's something that is real. So um, one of your first steps to do is to go out and look for pictures of drones. You're not modeling a specific drone, you're just kind of coming up with your own idea of what you want for your drone. So um, going through certain aspects of what each drone kind of has is kind of important. So like one thing that each of these drones have, like this one, it has four propellers on it. Okay, you can see the four propellers. It has these lights underneath. It has these legs so that it could land on stuff. Um, some drones, uh, have like these kinds of things. This is Lily. And if you're not familiar with drone technology, get familiar with it because it's like the next big thing. Um, these things are just like insane. This one will actually follow you around. You take it and you just like toss it and then it picks itself up and just starts flying. And then it just follows you around, which is pretty awesome. Um, obviously they have cameras on them too, which is pretty cool. Uh, before, we were talking about this the other day, before, if you wanted to do an aerial shot of something, you had to rent a helicopter and you would have to go up there and get, you know, a whole crew and then they would videotape whatever the shot was. Now, for a thousand dollars, you can go out there and buy, probably less than that for a cheaper one, but you can buy a pretty decent drone for a thousand dollars and get a GoPro and videotape stuff. And there's people who their company is just aerial shots with their drone. That's all they're doing. And again, you can make lots of money, help stand, uh, set yourself apart. That is a huge clip on that one. I don't think they're that big. Oh, here's another one, kind of neat. So we're not gonna add the camera to this, but it's something where you could do that if you wanted to, okay? Uh, here's another one. This one has uh, six, one, two, three, six, yes, hexo. Uh, six propellers, there's some with eight propellers. Couple things to note on them too is that they actually kind of go different directions. So like this one and that one are spinning different directions and this one and that one. That'll come into play when we actually model our stuff and we're placing it and animating it. Um, also look at the angle of these, how the propellers are not just like straight, they're actually like twisted and go into that. So obviously that will come into play too. That's kind of neat. So your first step, like I said, is to go out and get do some research uh, for what kind of drone you want to do. Um, I like these things too, these little guards. If you've never watched videos of drones, sometimes these things like will literally just like fly into trees and if you don't have things guarding it, it'll just like either hit the tree and shred it up or fall down and go boom. So we don't want that. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a very basic shape just to get a very, like I said, basic gesture of what it's gonna be doing. And I'm gonna go from there. Now, before I start working, I always want to go into my folders and set my folders up correctly. So, Sarcona, drone. I'm gonna make a folder called textures. Oops, text. I'm gonna make a folder called um, uh, render. And then I'll make another folder called scene. Okay, that way when I go into cinema, everything's kind of set up. Um, I'm also going to, not that we're texturing anything yet, um, but at some point I need to go into the preferences. And this is especially if you're working on your own computer, um, something important to do is to go into the files, there it is, and tell it where your file is. So in here I have my drone so that it'll know this is where my textures are, is inside that drone folder. So you know how every time you load in a file it says, do you want to copy it to your directory? Well, you don't have to do that if you set this up, okay? On these computers, you'd have to set this up every time you come in, but then it'll be, you won't have that question every single time. 
All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna start off modeling this. Now, the way that I start off modeling most items is I build it from a cube, okay? You always want to start off with the simplest form and build on top of that. Just like we did for our cereal box stuff, we started off with the basic shape and then we added to it and modified it and made it awesome. So I'm going to pull it like this, pull it like that, you know, and I'm just basically getting the body of this. Um, top view. Uh, I think that's the phantom right there. It's got some extra stuff. There you go. So basically like this, but I'm rotating it. So one of the things we want to do is try to figure out the best way to um, to make our workload a little bit easier. All right, this is good enough. Uh, so. <laughs> If we look at this and we cut it straight down the middle and then we cut it straight down the middle the other way, we basically have four quadrants that are exactly the same. So that's what we want to do. We want to focus on just one quadrant and get that one quadrant to look perfect. And then we can duplicate it, mirror it, and connect everything and make it look awesome. So that's what we're going to do. So as I look at this, I want this to be um, a quadrant of this. So here you can see this is um, pretty square. If you look at the dimensions here, it's 290 by 290. So if I, you know, I don't need this to be exact, but if I wanted to, I could just punch in 290 by 290 and then just kind of rough in the size of this, okay? And that way I'm kind of getting it to be exact. It doesn't have to be, but it just kind of helps visually if you see that you're not getting the proportions that you want. If this item is really big and this item is really small, it just helps. Okay, so there we go. Uh, for that. Then I'm going to add a segment. So anytime I add segments, I turn my shading lines on so I can see it. And then I'm adding in my different directions. I don't need direction there. I need that there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go to uh, C. I'm going to go to my faces and then I'm just going to delete stuff. Now remember on these computers, every time you reboot, your stuff gets reset. So every time you have to go over here and tell it you don't want to select vis or you want to select all items, not just visible ones. And make sure your tolerance is on too, so it grabs everything, there we go. And there we go. All right, so now we just have this one quadrant that we can focus on. So what I need to do for this one quadrant is I need to, if I'm going to take this one piece and I'm going to basically flip it over this way and then flip it up the other way, I need to make sure that these lines that I just cut stay intact. What I mean by that is I don't ever want to grab uh, one of these points and pull that point away from that center line because then when I mirror it, I'm going to have a big hole right there, okay? So don't move these edges away from these edges away from that line, okay? Now when I deleted the faces, I get these other points too, so I'm just going to grab all the points, right click and just do an optimize and that'll just get rid of all those. All right, so now I need to start adding in some extra divisions so I could start shaping this to look like my drone. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, let me pull up another view. Phantom DJI. This internet is lovely. So what I'm going to do is pull out this arm here is what I want to do. Now I don't want to just grab this and start pulling it out because if I do that, it's going to be really blobby. And when it goes from one shape to the other, it's going to look basically like a big squishy star shape instead of actually pe feeling like it's plastic. So I'm going to go to my knife tool. So I hit K to get to the knife tool. I go to my edges. I'm doing a uh, loop and I'm just going to drop in some lines. So right here, let's say, and right there, let's say, okay. Now looking at where this is, you can see that it comes in pretty close to here and pretty close to the bottom. I'm going to go with my own design. I'm just using that as reference for what it has. Okay, So you're using it as reference. You're not trying to replicate what they have. I'm also going to add in some lines over here. Why won't you like that way? Well, it's not letting me add one here, so I'm just going to switch to a different view. 
I'm going to switch to this view and just do the line. That way I can just go loop. And that adds a line right there, which is the wrong side. I wanted it here. There we go. And then same thing on this side. I want a line right there. Okay, so I just need an extra line here because what I'm doing is I'm separating this area. This is where I'm going to pull that wing out of or pull that, that platform out of. So I want to make sure that I've separated that. Now originally when I created this shape, I could have added all of these divisions at once and maybe it would have been easier, maybe not, it doesn't matter. The point is that as you start modeling your stuff, you have to recognize where you need divisions and just add them in, okay? So I know I need a division here, so I added it. So now I'm gonna grab these. I'm gonna hit D to get to my extrude and then I'm going to extrude this. Now when this comes out like this, um, I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna say create Great caps. Why didn't they do that? Preserve groups should have done that. I think something might be askew with my surface. Let me grab my points again. Let me marquee everything. Let me go to optimize just to make sure everything is cool. Oh, look at that. It didn't cut this all yeah, the way back. I what a jerk. All right. So let's go back to my cut. Let's go back to um, oops, line. And I'm just going to draw this in. There we go. So it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I can adjust that later. That shouldn't be why that did that though. And I didn't do it down here either. So we'll again just build this in. Oops. There we go. Okay. So now I'm back to this and then I'm going to go to the D key. I'm going to drag this out. Why aren't you staying together like you should be? <coughs> Let me make sure that my points. Well, I have one point there. Clicking on the corner. Shoot. Yeah, that should just be pulling out right there. Variation. No subdivisions. Preserve groups is what should be doing it. That's weird. Um, whatever. We'll work around it. All right. Oops. I did. I'm totally messing this one up. Uh, let's go back to my cut tool and drop this back in. Back to here, back to here, back to there. Good. Okay, back to points. Grab everything and I'm going to optimize. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit more, like 0.0. Let's just do one. So here's how I'm going to do this um, a little bit different is I'm going to go to my extrude and I'm going to just say extrude uh, inner. It should have worked too. It's being picky now. Control and pull on the green. Let's delete this because there's something wrong with my cube. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a new cube. It was 290 by 290 by 50. Nope. There we go. And like I said before, we could add those divisions now, so let's just add the divisions now. That'll save us, obviously, a little bit of time later. And maybe we won't end up with a crazy surface. Cool. So that should be good. So I added four, three, and four. Now I'm going to hit C. Go in with my faces and delete those faces, delete these faces. Go to my edges, pull that one over, pull this one over, pull that one up, pull that one down. Okay. Back to my extrude. Oh, it's still acting weird. It's acting weirder now. I'm going to blame this computer because my computer wasn't doing this. Let's go here, grab everything, optimize the good faces. Click, click, D. All right. 
So I'm just going to do this a different way and just pull this out and pull this out. Okay. And then I'm going to grab these two faces and just delete them. And then I will add my own face in right here. So I'm going to use the um, bridge tool. And I'm just going to say bridge this. Oops. Let me deselect. Um, B. Bridge this edge to that edge. Bridge this edge to that edge. And so this is just another way to kind of connect these two pieces together. And then I can start to customize what this looks like. So now I can grab these. And I want to push this um, edge right here. This is my wing. So I want to pull it out at an angle like this. But if you look at the direction this arrow is, it's going in that direction. But I want to bring this closer here first and then pull it out. So if I hit uh, W, come on, hit W, it'll switch the direction of my move tool. So now I can pull this here. Then I can grab this one, pull that there. Then I can go to my faces, grab these three, and now I can pull this out just like that, okay? So this is gonna be that wing part that's out there. So now I need to scale this down, so I'm gonna go to my scale tool and scale it this way, and scale it this way, okay? Now I wanna see what this is gonna look like. So one of the, the things we wanna always look at is what does it look like smooth, okay? Um, in Maya, there's actually, you hit three and it shows you, and then you hit one and it brings you back to this. Uh, so far, I haven't found that for cinema. So I'm going to click on my subdivision. I'm going to drop my cube into it. And now I can see what this is going to look like when it's nice and smooth. Now I can uncheck that and continue working on the cube. You never want to work on the smooth. We always want to work on the rough version because, again, we're dealing with the least amount of points here. Um... All right, so here's another thing that I'm not liking is this. So you see how this comes into a triangle right here, right there? I don't like that triangle. What I want to do is I want this to be, uh, to go into this surface and then come back. So I'm going to basically just right click on these and dissolve them, and that gets rid of them, and then I'm gonna draw in my own. So I'm gonna go to my knife tool again, and I'm gonna draw, oops, I dissolved too many. I want to dissolve that one. There we go. I'm going to go to my knife tool and I'm going to draw this here to here to there and there. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So it's going to go from here to here to here to here. Again, I'm using a different software's um, tools, so that's why I keep screwing up. There we go. Okay, so now that's not going to change the surface a whole lot if we turn this back on. You can see this looks a little bit squarer than it did a second ago. You can see the bottom is what it looked like before. That's what it looks like now. So it squared it off a little bit, but the next step is going to be what's going to really um, improve it. Now looking at this shape again, you can also see that we pretty much have whatever is on top is also on the bottom of the drone for the most part initially. Right, so whatever is up here is down there. So why again model the bottom? Why not just cut the bottom off and that way we can just flip it and flip it and flip it and continue flipping it. So I'm gonna go with my knife tool. I'm gonna switch to this view. I'm gonna make sure I don't say restrict to selection or visible only on. That way I won't have that mistake again. And then I will cut it straight through. Yep, there we go. Then I'm gonna grab the faces for the bottom like this. Um, yep, and delete. Cool. All right, so now I have this top piece that is just that. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I don't think I need this one. So I think I can delete this edge right here. So I'm just going to dissolve that. No, nope, because then that gives me a triangle there. I mean, it's not a huge issue. I think that'll be cool. All right, that works. All right, so now I'm gonna go with my knife tool and I'm gonna turn this to loop and I'm gonna add a loop right here. Nope, I want it to be 
right there. All right, I'm going to go with the regular line so I can draw it in myself. What? I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> single. Let's turn single off. Visible only. Green and gods. I don't even have anything selected. What's it doing? All right, we'll just delete that after. There we go. Okay. So now I have this one. All right, that went all the way around, which is what I wanted. So now I can switch back to my move tool. I can go back to this edge. I can click this edge and just oops, dissolve it. There we go. All right, so now we have this nice edge going all the way around. So now I'm going to jump to my top view. And I'm just going to grab the points for this and just pull it back. Okay, so there's the points. I'm going to pull it back here. Pull this back here. Because I want this to be pretty close to this original surface. So I missed a point. Right there. Okay, so now that's pretty close to where that surface is. So now let's right, uh, grab everything and optimize again to get rid of those extra faces. So now when I turn this on, you can see that we're going to get this surface that looks a lot uh, sharper right here. Okay, so now it's starting to feel a bit more like this wing goes into the surface and there's a little bit of a bevel happening right there. Okay, so now I'm going I'm to turn these lines off just so we don't need those lines right now. All right, so that's looking pretty good, cool. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna just pull this off for a minute <clears throat> and I'll keep that there, but I'm just not gonna use it. So what I wanna do is I wanna mirror it. So under this one, uh, I'm gonna go to symmetry and I drop this into here. You'll see that there's my symmetry, right? So it just mirrored it over. So if I take this and drop that into a symmetry, that then I can specify the direction and then I can again drop this into a symmetry and get the bottom drop that into it and then again choose the direction all right and then I could drop this whole thing into my subdivision and then turn it on and we'll be able to see what it's looking like okay so it's pretty neat how we can work with just this one piece but then still see the whole thing now the fact that we're seeing this cut line, that's because when I did my cut, I wasn't perfectly on that line. So I have to fix that. So I'm just gonna disable all these, gets me back to my cube. And then I'm gonna go into my view and make sure my grid is on. Uh, grid, there we go. Make sure that I have my points selected. And you can see right here, that's not touching that bottom grid line. So I need to turn on my grid snapping, work plane snap, grid point snap, there we go. And then I can switch back. And now if I turn everything back on, now I have one shape all the way around, okay? All right, that's pretty good. So now I can go in here and start to customize what this initial cube shape is doing, right? So as long as I have this selected, I can modify this one shape and it'll update all the other stuff. So if I go to the points and I click on this point and I pull it up, you can see how it pulls it up on all of those points. Okay, So that's what we want to do. Now it could be a little confusing to work with because you have so many different areas. So if you do find you're getting confused, maybe you just shut off all of them and just work on the one. So I'm going to go into my top view and I'm going to use a different tool to cut because I didn't really care for that um, knife tool, the way the knife tool is working. Uh, I'm going to leave it on line, and I'm just going to go like this, just straight across. There we go. That's all I needed there. And then I can go into my points here, and I'm going to go marquee this and pull it back. So what I want to do is have a spot for the motor. i turn my snapping off also. I want to have a spot for the motor, and if you look at the uh, images of these, they're basically like little disks, right? It's like a little area that's round. 
Um, on one side of it where the motor is housed, it's pretty flat. On the other side, it's more rounded. So all I'm doing here is just getting the basic shape of what that's going to be because the top is gonna to look different than the bottom in that case and I'll have to customize each side. So here's the basic shape of this is just this round piece like that. All right, that looks good. And again, we could, it's just as easy as switching that on and seeing what it looks like. All right, I need a little bit more detail to this. I need a little bit more um, change in direction. What I wanted to do is come in and kind of like stop and then have a rounded piece on the end of it, right? So I want that to be a little bit more apparent. What's happening here is that it's just going in rounding out. That's all that's happening. So I want to basically pinch this area a little bit more. So I'm going to go to my edge here and double click it and then put a bevel on it. And by putting a bevel, you can see that I basically get two divisions. So now I can take this one line and kind of squeeze it in a little bit to tighten up that area. So if I go to my points now, I switch to my top view, I switch back to my arrow, and I just pull this in and pull that in and pull these in. You can see how this is gonna come into this shape and then create that rounded shape. Turn all these back on. Okay, it's there. We want it a little bit more apparent. Let's go back. Oops. Okay, so I can make it more apparent by adding another bevel to this. Okay, every time you do a, a subdivision, what the subdivision surface does is it says you have a point here and a point there. I'm going to add a point in the middle and go to the average of it. Okay, so if you have a huge gap, you're going to get this nice, soft, smoothing area. If you have points that are here and here, it's going to be a, bit, be a bit sharper. So if I go to this and I just double click this edge again, I add a bevel, just like that, just nice and soft, and then I turn my stuff back on. You can see how much sharper that feels than it did a minute ago. Before it kind of like softened into it. And now it's a bit sharper and crisper. We have a nice little edge right there. All right, that's good, okay? Another thing I'm gonna do before I get into the um, next part of this, uh, maybe I'll do it after I mirror it. I'm gonna mirror it first, okay. So I'm gonna pull the cube out of here and I'm gonna delete this little symmetry setup we have. Cause I wanna uh, symmetrize it, symmetry. I wanna do this to it a different way, okay? I want basically the top and the bottom to be done first, okay? Not the way that we had it originally. So I'm gonna go to the symmetry and just switch this to uh, XZ, I believe it was. That's good. And then I'm gonna make this an actual surface. So we hit C, now it's an actual surface. So it's all by itself, here it is. And I can just pull it out of this group and delete that because I don't need that anymore, okay? So now this is a regular surface. Now I can customize it so that the bottom is nice and round and the top is kind of flat and then I also need you know extra details add a lot to this this little seam going around I want to add that as well okay so I'm gonna go to my edges here um, let me make sure every time you do a um, a mirroring you always want to make sure that it did actually actually seal it off and it did okay sometimes it's just so close you can't tell all right, so now I'm going to go here and I'm going to grab the faces or the edges of this one. And I'm just going to pull this edge in a bit and then just pull it down. Okay. So now that should create more of a softer bottom and the top should be a bit crisper. So let's drop it into the subdiv, turn it on, and you can see how this definitely feels a bit softer. I could even pull it down further and soften that effect a bit more even, okay? So now I'm gonna go back to my cube and on this edge all the way around, right there should be good, maybe not there. I'm gonna have this go this way, so it goes all the way around here, okay? I have to have some sort of path for this to follow uh, whenever you do a bevel. It has to have a start, it has to have an end. If it just stops in the middle, just like right here, it would just be um, weird geometry, and then when you smooth it, it'll look extra weird. 
So I'm going to add a bevel to this right here. There we go. So now what this is going to do is that this is going to create a nice crisp top while the bottom stays a bit softer because there's not a bevel here. Okay. So the more edges you have compact, the tighter the surface is going to be. The further apart they are when you subdivide it, it's going to soften them. So if I turn this back on, I go to object mode and I click off of this. There we go. You can definitely see that the top of this is a bit crisper than the bottom. The bottom feels softer, the top feels crisper. Okay, because of the bevels that we added to this. So now I'm going to jump back, turn this off, jump back to my cube. Um, sometimes when you're working in cinema also, you know, stuff does get separated, so I always like to just make sure that um, I haven't done anything that's going to separate my edges and stuff. Alright, so it looks good there. Um, down here, I think what I want to do just to help enhance the softness is just to grab some of these edges. So I'm just kind of pulling this down a bit more just to help soften the bottom of this a bit more, round it off a bit more, while still keeping the harshness on top. Yep, I forgot to pull that one too. There we go. There we go. So now that bottom piece is a bit softer. Now another thing I may want to do, I may want to squish this whole thing. Like this looks still pretty chunky because it's basically just like one thickness coming out. So I'm going to turn that off again. I'm going to switch to one of my other views. Um, yeah, maybe this one we'll see. It might be just perspective is going to do it. So I'm going to grab the points and marquee these. Now you'll notice that I'm switching around a lot. So depending on what I'm trying to select, it's either going to be points or edges or faces. So if I'm trying to grab a block of things, like if I know that I want to grab this area and pull it up, I'll grab the face and pull it up. Okay. But if I want to grab, um, edges I could do that too I just have to make sure I grab all four edges and then pull it up if I grab points I have to grab all four points and then pull it up okay so I switch around a lot depending on what it is I'm trying to do um, so sometimes you'll see me grab edges sometimes you'll see me see me grab points now in this case I went to this area and I grabbed the points because if I grabbed edges see how it selects all that if I did the same thing with faces, it's going to grab all those. With points, it's only going to grab the ones that I'm marquee. So now I can go to my scale and scale this down. And then uh, raise it up. Alright, so that looks pretty good. Turn this back on. Alright, so now we're starting to get somewhere. Um, I think I want to adjust the size of this also. Maybe just kind of push it like that a little bit. And I'm just grabbing these points and just kind of pulling them out just to help define that shape a little bit better. Alright. Alright, so now I can look at this and see if I'm liking how this is coming out. So far, so good. Alright. So now what I need to do is I need to create um, this little seam that goes around this. Okay, So I'm going to go into my perspective mode, go to my edges, click on my cube, and then hit um, this edge right here all the way around. Okay, As you model, you should have these things that you're able to double click, and it goes all the way around. If I were to double click this edge right here and it didn't do anything, or I double click this edge, it doesn't do anything. Or I double click it and it does something weird like select it like this, then there's something definitely wrong with my surface because it should kind of flow around it. Okay? As you model stuff, the edges should flow from one spot to the next. So now that I have this, I should be able to go to my bevel tool. Nope. Yes. And then add a subtle bevel in here, just like we did before. All right, so now I have a thin bevel. Then I should be able to go into my faces. And let me 
turn that off. Oops, I have to use my loop tool. Select loop and grab that. Okay. So now I have the loop of the faces all the way around. So now if my extrude tool decides to play nice, I should be able to click and drag and push that in. Okay, so you can see if I go right here, you can see how we have this little step here. That's where the two pieces of plastic would be like joined together. Okay, it's a, it's a small thing, but it definitely will add something to the realism of this. Now, if I go into my sub div right now, you'll see that it looks like more like a hamburger than it does a seam. Oops. Now, from back here, it's not going to look like that, uh, but it still does look a bit too soft for my taste. Okay, I definitely want to fix that. So I'm going to unsub div that. I'm going to go into my edges, and I'm going to double click all the edges in here. That one, that one, that one, that one. I'm going to go to my bevel, and I'm just going to add a small little bevel right to this. Okay, so you'll see how tiny this is, just enough right here that it'll create some sharpness. So instead of it trying to round out both of those surfaces, It'll come down, turn, come down, turn, come down, turn, okay? So now if we look at this, there we go, that's much nicer. All right? Now, if it is too big, because this is definitely like way too big, I just hit undo a bunch of times. There we go. Um, keep hitting undo, keep hitting undo. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go back to this area and then I'm just gonna re-add that bevel in there just a bit softer. Like that, I think should be good. All right. Um, I could even type it in, maybe like half that size, just to be safe. All right, now I'll go to my faces. I'll go to my select loop selection. There it is. I'll go to my extrude. I'll push it in a little bit. And you really gotta get close to this when you get to this level of uh, tininess. Okay, so now I'm grabbing these. I'm adding my small little bevel. Turn my subdiv on, and that's 10 times better than it was. Okay, that actually feels like that is a nice, smooth um, transitional area. Okay. Now I'm also gonna go into here and maybe add a little bit more detail into that. So let me go to my faces. Um, let me pull this one out. I don't think I need that one right there where it is. All right, so let me grab the faces for this. I'm gonna go to my extrude inner, which is W, and pull this in. Now this one, preserve groups, you're playing nicely. And then what I can do is maybe just push this down a little bit <clears throat> and then extrude it in a little bit like that. Okay, so now this is where the motor house would sit. It's just right there. Alright, uh, MW again. A little bit more extruding right here. Just so it's a little bit sharper right there. That looks nice. Okay. Now I can adjust this afterwards too. If I decide that I need this to be more rounded or more blocky or whatever, I can always switch to my top view and grab the points to do that, okay? And because I've kind of kept everything clustered together, I can see where these points are and I can see where I need to move them to create whatever shape it is I need to create. Um, even here where it's kind of cluttered, I can still select what I need to. Okay, so I always look at all of my views, making sure that everything looks nice. If it doesn't look nice, chances are the geometry is not gonna look nice when you go to render it. So I'm just kind of rounding this off a little bit more so it feels a little bit more um, cylindrical. Um, I'm gonna add in my motor. So I'm gonna go to my cylinder and I'm just gonna pull the motor over here. I'm gonna go to my um, radius and shrink this down. Okay, now you can kind of see that coloring, right? So you can see this right here. Um, I can use this as my guide 
for kind of lining this up too. So I can go to this and then go to that and then go to this. And what I'm doing is trying to find one of these consistent edges and line that up all the way around this. And what that does is it helps the shape of my cylinder match the shape of my um, platform a bit better. Okay, here it doesn't need to match perfectly, so that should be good. All right, so now I can take my cylinder, I can shrink the height down, pull it up a bit, shrink the radius down a bit more. There we go. And then let's see, I can add some caps to this. Oops. Uh, take the radius down some. There we go. And then looking at what these look like, again, we're not building an actual motor. Um, I don't know why I said again, we never said that before. <laughs> we're not building a motor, we're building something that looks like a motor or looks like some sort of cylindrical device. So the idea here is just to fancy it up, to make it look like it is something that obviously it's not. Um, if we look at what the motors would look like from this top view, you can see that there's these like little cylinder areas uh, where you can see inside the motor. Even that stuff we don't need to do. Uh, we could add some of that in there, uh, which we'll probably try to do. All right. Uh, let me see my wire frame. So I like to always look at the wire also because this kind of helps me guide and, and plan where I'm going to be putting stuff. So I'm going to go here. I'm adding a couple divisions vertically and a couple divisions the other way too. Um, I'm going to take my rotational segments down to, let's say, 8. No, that's too little. Let's say 16. Okay, so if this is a cutout, you can see how it is. So that looks like that's about the size of one of those cutouts. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at about this size. So now I can go to Faces. Oops, I hit C on it. I can go to Faces and I can grab... that there and then I'll go over a couple and I'll grab this one and I'll go over a couple and this one's gonna have five I believe I counted that right and go over a couple oh, I'm off see so I have this one and then I would be off there uh, let me just do opposites, that'll work. Let me grab this one. Let me go to this side. And then I just grab the opposite one. And then I rotate it 90 degrees and I grab the one that would be over here. Now again, this is kind of being a bit nitpicky because nobody's going to notice it. If I grab this one or that one or this one, um, no one's going to say, well, those two are kind of close. No one's really going to see it. And if we do, we really don't want to be hanging out with those kind of people anyway. <laughs> All right, so now we can delete it. So now we have those openings there. So now we don't want to um, ever leave a surface looking super thin like this. So I always want to um, grab the faces. And then I want to uh, extrude. So I can hit D and then extrude this. And then make sure I hit create caps so it caps off the inside of it. So now we have some thickness on here, which will definitely go a long way when we're modeling this or when we're uh, rendering it out. Okay. And then because we have this area open, we also could include some of this. Now, again, it doesn't have to be what's actually there. It just has to look cool. It just has to look like something. So uh, what is actually in there is like copper wiring kind of wrapped around. So I'm not going to create a bunch of copper wiring, but what I am going to do is try to create something inside here. Now instead of trying to bring this over here and line it up and get it perfect, I'm going to create something right here at the origin, and then I can duplicate it and scoot it over there. So I'm going to say orient this in the um, X direction, there we go. And let's take the ring segments down, just because we're going to have a lot of these. Take the pipe segments down. Take the ring radius down. Take the pipe radius down. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be tiny, right? So maybe this is four and then this is two. Maybe this is one. There we go. 
And then I can also slice this, right? Because I don't need the whole thing because I'm not gonna see the whole thing. So why have the extra geometry in there? So if I set this to 90 and, oops, negative 90, there we go. And 270, nope, uh, negative. I'll just do this. Positive 90, there we go, that makes sense. All right, so negative 90 to positive 90. Now I have this little ring right here. And then what I can do is, um, I think that still needs to be a little bit tinier. So let's go with maybe two, oops, three, and 0.5. There we go, okay. So now what I can do is I can use a cloner on this. Uh, MoGraph cloner, drop my torus inside the cloner. And this is what we use for the serial, right? So we can go in here to um, count and we can add more of this. Now right now they're not being in, uh, offset at all. So once I start offsetting these, there they are, you can see where they're at. So I don't want them to be offset like that. I'm gonna, um, they will be offset, but I want them to be offset less, okay? And not in the Y direction. So I come down here and I'm gonna just take their X direction so let's say, I don't know, 0.5. There we go. I guess I didn't need to offset it because they were already offsetting. Uh, 0.5, that should be good. And then what I'm gonna also do on this, because it's a cloner, I can go to my MoGraph effectors and I can add a random in here. And then the random, it's set to position. I'm gonna, again, turn off position and I'm gonna turn on like rotation and just give it a little bit of rotation. Not that way. There we go. Something like this, just so it looks a little bit more sporadic. Also scale, and then I will scale it down uniformly like that, okay? So it's gonna look like there's something else in there. Again, just kind of giving us a little bit of detail. Um, go back to the cloner. Let me take this to 22, just so my OCD doesn't have issues. And then let me go to this, let's say 0.25, maybe a 10, uh, 16. All right, that looks pretty good, okay? Now again, from a distance, you're gonna see something there. All right, so that'll work. So I'm gonna take my cloner now and just scoot it over, okay? Uh, so I'm scooting it over to about here, and then I'm gonna put in another cloner. So I have a cloner on a cloner. MoGraph, cloner. Okay, now this other cloner is going to be a radial one. Okay, so you can see the direction that this is radiating from. I switch my plane to one of these other ones, not that one, that one. And then I can say I want four of these. And then I can change my radius. Okay, so this is where I can just take this and now put it over there. Now the nice thing about doing these kinds of things is that we basically just have one torus that we've duplicated a bunch of times to create the initial block and then we've duplicated that a bunch of times to create the other stuff. So if at some point we ever decide that we wanted um, you know, something else inside here, we can do that. I could create a cylinder, let's say, my object. Two, ten, there we go. So you see how I can drop this like right in here and then I can drop this inside the cloner. Now if I drop it into this cloner, it's gonna clone the torus and the cylinder. So you'll see that we get like both of those in all those spots. If I drop it into this cloner, I get a mishmash of both of these. I get the cylinders here, or the torus is here and the cylinders there. If I grab both of these objects and I go to um, objects and then I say, group, you see that it puts them together. And then I can always just grab the cylinder and just adjust it and drop it right in there. 
okay? And even adjust the positioning of it and the size of it and all that stuff. Okay, so if I decide that I need to add more stuff into this or shape it or whatever, I have the ability to do that. If I decided that I needed, where'd you go? If I decided that I needed more of these uh, pieces, I can go to this cloner here and just crank this up and I'll just get more pieces to fill that in without me having to duplicate and rotate and move and scale. So I think this was 16, so I'll leave that at 16. And now all I have to do is just take this one cloner and just move it all the way over here. That was pretty close. Okay, so if I look at the center of this, there it is. Right there. Now we can rotate it. And I should be able to scale this. Whoops, wrong button. Grab that again. Maybe we'll scale it up a bit more. Now I'm scaling this up a bit more, okay? But what I want to do is I want these to be bigger, but I want them to still obviously fit inside here. So I can go to this cloner and change this radius. That radius is how far apart from that center they are. Again, this is not stuff that you're going to grasp the first time you do it. It's going to be something that you have to continuously kind of play with and tweak until you figure it out. Bit more there, uh, maybe a little bit down in the Y. There we go. Um, and because all of this stuff is still there from the original one, I can go back to the original one, go back to my slice, and control my slice that's right there. So now I'm just shrinking this down and kind of getting it into place. All right, so that looks good there. Oops, maybe a little bit more adjustment. There, and there, and there, okay. It was still just a little bit too big, so we just had to tweak it a bit more. Cool, all right. So now we have something in there. Like I said, if we need to adjust it, we have the stuff right here to do that. Okay. Um, so then we can jump back to this and see what other parts that the drone thing has. So the lid of this um, does have a little bit more shape to it. Like this kind of dips in a little bit or dips up, uh, whichever one we want to do. So we can grab the original cube, nope, the cylinder, there it is. Go to our loop selection. Uh, let's grab this one, and I'm going to go to my scale and scale it up, and then go to my extrude and just pull it up a little bit. And again, this is just to give it some extra detail. Scale it in a little bit, regular extrude up. There we go. And then I can drop a um, little propeller motor on top of it. Now again, just like the other one, I can create my propeller motor here, or my propeller there, and then just scoot it over and that way it'll duplicate and move around with all the other stuff. So I'm going to go to again a cylinder, that's a cube, uh, go to a cylinder, blanking, there we go, and object mode so I can scale this down, scoot this in. Okay. There's two parts to this. One of them is this little base part, and then the other one are these little propellers. Everything is going to be grouped into the same thing or connected to the same thing, but they're not going to be modeled from the same object. Okay. So I have this center part that's going to look like a little uh, rocket here, just this little blobby thing. So I'm going to hit C on this. Oops, not yet. I'm going to take my divisions down. Always take your divisions down to something more manageable. 36 is not manageable. It's very difficult to work with. Now I can hit C. Now I can grab the faces or the edges or the points and scale this up. And then I can go with my edges and just do a couple little splits. So I'm going to go with my loop. 
say there. Let's actually add one first. And I can scale this up just to kind of give it some rounding like that. And then I'll go in with my knife tool again, add a couple more cuts here, go to my faces, go to my loop selection, there you go. and then extrude this in. Create caps is off, there we go. Okay, and what else? Maybe the top of this. Let's drop it into a subdiv and see what happens. All right, so that's what it's looking like so far. Uh, remember that your cylinder comes in, the top cap is separate from the bottom cap, so we have to like close those off. So I'm gonna go back to my point mode, go back to this, turn this off, and then just optimize. Oops. Uh, this case, my optimize actually sealed off these pieces. So I'm gonna hit undo and just be a little bit more careful with that size. So point one, that's not gonna seal it, and then we should be good there. Okay, so now I can just take these points here, there. There, and just kind of pull that up a little bit. All right, that looks good. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of sharpen the, um, maybe I don't need to. I'm gonna sharpen the bottom edge. I don't need the top edge to be sharp. So I go to my edges again, double click. Oops. Add a little bevel. go. So now we have that. And so now we can add the propeller. Now the propeller part will just be a cube. So this way, this way. Okay. And then however big we want these to be. Obviously we can't have them be too big or they'll like hit the other ones, right? So we have to make sure we pick a good size for this. We can always adjust it later, but we wanna make sure that they're still a good size. So something like this probably. Okay, so I'm gonna hit C, uh, not C yet. Go to my cube. I'm gonna add some divisions to this. Let's say six this way. That should be good. I shouldn't need any divisions going the other way. Six divisions that way should be good. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit C. And then what I want to do is two things. I wanna taper this down at the end, and then I also want to twist it, right? Those are the two things that it has. So remember that we can use the bend. If you got to that part in the video for the cereal box, I showed how to use the bend. So you'll see there's a twist in here, there's also a bulge, and there's also a taper. So I'm gonna click on the taper. I'm gonna line it up first. So I'm going to rotate it. And then I'm gonna scale it down. There we go. Okay, now it's not affecting this yet, okay? The taper only affects something when it's under it. So when I take the taper and drop it into here, now the taper is going to affect it. So when I grab the strength, and I pull it, you can see how the taper is now affecting what that looks like. Okay, so that is definitely tapering it the way we want to taper it. Now let's also go in here and grab a twist. I'm gonna set up the twist the same way. I go to rotate, I hold shift, I drag it over. I go to my sizing and I get this sized appropriately. Now I could go in here too and just grab vertices, like in, in Maya I wouldn't do the, the tools here, but in this they're set up a bit different so it's actually a bit easier to use. Um, so I'm gonna drop it into here and then I'm gonna go in with the twist and then twist it. And now we're getting that twist. Now it is actually twisting it a bit much because the twist actually is starting back here. So I need to shrink this, it's a bit too long. Oops. There we go. And then I'll move this forward. 
right about there. Okay, and I can also go back to my original cube. Uh, let me pull these out of here for a second. Go to my original cube, just shrink this down a bit. Looks like it's a bit too thick. Okay, I'll drop these back in. Oops, not all that. There we go. So now we've tapered it and we've twisted it. Okay, and then we can also take this and drop that into a subdiv and now it'll smooth it out and it'll look like a propeller. <coughs> Pretty sweet. Awesome. Cool. Uh, so now we have our propeller. Let's start naming stuff because it's getting very confusing. Propeller. And then this is our propeller center. This is our coil. Uh, that's our random thing. This is our Come on. Motor housing, and this is our body, our bid. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. All right, so now let's take this propeller, and then uh, we could drop it onto a cloner again. That's nothing, you know, it's not a huge deal to do that either. Uh, that way, in case we ever need to come back and edit the one, we can always just grab it and edit the other one. Uh, we could also drop in a. Um, Symmetry. I don't think I want to do that though. Right, if I drop in a symmetry, you can see that both blades are going the same way. That doesn't make sense. So I'm going to hit undo and not use a symmetry. I'm going to use a propeller. I'm going to go to my cloner. I'll drop the propeller into the cloner. And then we'll specify we only want one more, or uh, two more. Two. I don't want them pivoted, I want them rotated around. So I will rotate it. Not that way, that way. So 180 degrees that way. So now I have this cloner in there. Now I don't need to see the um, twist deformers and stuff, so I can just turn those off so they're not visible. Cool. All right, so now I can take this and just move it over. Oops. I gotta take all the stuff, these two. Uh, Alt uh, G is our grouping. Uh, propeller group. And so now we can just go into our top view and move this over on top of this. Okay, now it's important that we get this as close to being online with this as possible. So as I move this, you can see I'm going to be able to get it pretty close, but why not use snapping, right? So I turn my snapping on. And I make sure that I have vertex snap on. I don't need work plane snap. And now when I move it in this direction, you see how it snaps to that vertex and snaps to that one. So now that's perfectly lined up. It's upside down, but it's perfectly lined up. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And then we can shrink it down. It's obviously way too big. So we go to our scale tool. We shrink this down. And then it fits right on top of that. Okay. There's nothing actually connecting it, doesn't need to connect it, we just have something there that looks like it's connecting it. Alright, and then we could say, geez, that's tiny, you know, the blade should be a lot bigger. So then we can just open up our stuff. Uh, blades, there they are. I'm just going to deactivate these two items, oops, wrong button. There we go. I'm going to grab my cube and make it a bit longer. There we go. So I can pretty much go right to this halfway line and not intersect any of the other ones. And then I can reactivate these. And then my blades should be good to go. Yep, we still have our bend. We still have our taper. That should be good. All right, and then what we're gonna do, what's that? Housing body. All right, so let's try this. So I'm going to take everything and group it. Alt G, and then I'm going to take this and drop it into a symmetry. 
gonna save first. I should probably save something. I haven't saved anything at all. There we go. So I'm gonna drop this into my symmetry here, and it symmetryized it. I'll do it again. I'll drop this into not that. Drop this into another symmetry. And then just change the direction. There it goes. And now that's done. So if I turn off my lines here, we should get a pretty sick looking drone. That looks pretty nice. Now we do have a couple areas that it's not lining up. You can see right here, this isn't lining up. And it's because our body has this subdivision on it. So if I disable it, now it'll line up perfectly. Okay, so that's pretty uh, pretty good right there. I don't need to worry about the other stuff for now. Okay, because this is just, you know, we're still eyeballing it and still lining things up. All right, cool. So that's where I'm gonna stop this now. That should get you a pretty good distance into it. The rest of the, the modeling part is going to be the same exact thing. It's just a matter of figuring out where we need divisions and then adding those divisions or taking them away or doing whatever we need to um, to create the look of it. Our end product, we don't want to have a bunch of subdivisions, subdivisions, subdivisions. We want to have something that's just flat. That's the, the goal of it. So right now, all the ones we're using for this is simply for testing our stuff out. Now that I've tested it and I see that everything is looking good, I want to immediately pull this out and then I can leave those there if I'm going to use them again um, or I can just go back to working on this and if I need to I can just drop it back into this bottom one see what it looks like and then when I'm done pull it back out okay again one of the nice benefits of using cinema is this kind of functionality uh, we don't have that in other programs as much and then if you wanted to you know it's always fun to kind of render these out uh, I'm going to add some ambient occlusion in here, and that will help it look nicer. So, yeah. so you can see it definitely feels a little bit more solid with this. Um, I encourage you to do little renders, little test renders of it, just to make sure that what you're seeing in the render view is still pleasant, right? Because we don't want it to look like garbage. Um, sometimes you just don't see stuff while you're in here. When you hit that control R, you'll notice that there's a bit of stuff that you need to maybe add some detail or whatever. Like one area that's bothering me right now is this. If I hit control R and it's still there, which it is, I need to fix that, okay? I need to go look at those lines and see why it's doing that. You can see that it's kind of folding right here. So I disable this and I can say, oh, it's probably this mess of triangle because it doesn't like triangles. So maybe I can go into my edges, maybe. Come on, deselect. There we go. Oh, because I had that selected. All right. All right, so maybe I can go into here and not delete that, dissolve that. There we go. And then I can use my cut tool. Now, why it's doing that? I'm gonna have to investigate that. There we go, because I had to create end gons on. All right. And now I can go back to this and then just dissolve all these out. There we go. Okay, so now if I go in here and then look at this, you'll see that I don't see that weird pinch, okay? Because again, just like the very first thing we talked about, it's all about the flow of these lines. If the lines aren't flowing nice, when you smooth it, it's definitely not gonna look good. So anywhere there's a triangle, um, you really want to be a little bit um, picky about it and make sure that it's not causing any issues. So here's the other side doing the same thing, right? So then I can go into here, I can dissolve that one, and then drag this one up, right? So I just go to my cut tool, click, click. And then now I turn this back on, and we don't have that weird funkiness that was happening a minute ago. Oops. 
And just so you can see it too, here it is with, let me hit Alt R, or um, not Alt R, Shift R. So there it is with ambient occlusion, and I'll turn ambient occlusion off just so you can see it, because it does make a huge difference. There it is without it. So you can see the before and after of what ambient occlusion adds to your scene. All of this detail here where these items are touching, um, it definitely adds a nice touch to the scene. And sometimes you can actually get away with not even having um, shadows in your scene by just using ambient occlusion. Look at this line, this seam that's you know barely readable. And then we click that and it just pops a bit better. Cool. I'm not sure why these are white, probably because I have other stuff on them, okay? But texturing will come like at the end of this. Um, all right, cool. That's where I'm gonna stop it there. Um, so once you're done with the cereal box, you can start working on this stuff. Um, if you get to a certain point and you're not happy with your, your drone or whatever, just wipe it and make a new one. If it took you an hour to get this far or two hours or three hours to get this far and you're not happy with it, the next couple weeks is not gonna be any more pleasant. So wipe it and it may take you two hours to get this far or an hour to get this far or 20 minutes to get this far. As you progress and as you start doing these things over and over and over again, you'll get better at doing that, okay? And you'll be happier with the results. So we're gonna be,